When I was a very young boy, I only had a few interests. Eating, sleeping, Teletubbies, and one of the cool ass toy my mum managed to grab me at the nearest Kmart. These toys range from Hot Wheels to Lego, but the coolest ones always were the giant robots. Bionicle, Transformers, Power Rangers. I'm sure many of you can relate to having these awesome action figures that had more guns than would be even slightly practical. Plus, they made excellent companion pieces to Lego minifigs and sets because you could simulate these things thumbing through cities and duking it out as you please. And this, I'm sure, was what sparked my absolute fascination with giant robots. Hell yeah! Now, none of this is news to you. I've talked plenty of times in this channel about how much I freaking love these things. I don't think there's anything in the world that I love more than giant robots. There is nothing in the entire world that gets me more around. Yeah, no, 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 we're not doing that again. And I know for a fact that I'm not alone in this. Giant robots, or mecha, or mechs, or whatever the hell you want to call them, have been very prevalent in media for as long as most people can remember. The past 60 years or so have shown us that people really, really like watching giant robots exploding the shit out of everything. And there's plenty of shows, games, comics, and movies to choose from when it comes to getting to watch these metal titans do battle against giant monsters, aliens, or even other giant robots. Many of these series have been incredibly influential on in pop culture, namely Mobile Suit Gundam or Voltron, but more on those later. It's just so incredibly satisfying to watch these enormous behemoths clash in a spectacular display of mechanical combat. The whole giant part really adds to that epic aspect. While not all of these series take place on Earth, the ones that do make excellent use of their size by using otherwise large objects as weapons, like beating a kaiju to death with a massive boat. Ah, it's just so fucking cool! So what makes robots cooler than just giant... Guys. Well, first, because that'd be weird and gross, but also because many of the most iconic mecha and robot designs combine several cool looking features into one badass bot. With sleek and gorgeous designs, or beefier and tougher appearances that you just know is going to cause as much collateral damage as humanly possible. Give him guns! Give him swords! Give him wings! Give him even more shit to kill things with! Also, because they're robots and not humans, there could be a lot more damage and destruction to their armor and bodies without pissing off an entire horde of angry mothers wondering why their children are watching such filthy, disgusting, disgusting. violence. For some reason, as long as it's mechanical and doesn't have any red blood, animators could get away with a hell of a lot more violence, which really allowed a lot of these mecha shows to let loose with the battles. And believe me, I am not complaining. At face value, the concept would seem pretty bare bones. All you need to do is make a cool ass looking robot design, and then make it giant, give it some shit to fight, and then bam, you're golden. But because of how long lasting the genre has been, to prevent the appeal from getting stale, there have been plenty of interesting twists on your traditional metal boy. We've seen giant robots being remote controlled, sentient giant robots, giant robots that are being piloted by whiny 12 year old children. Butt controls. Butt control. Giant robots are most commonly associated with anime because the whole trend was kind of Japan's fault because of some earlier Japanese shows that focused on really, really big robots. The most famous one of all, of course, being Gundam. The long lasting series about two warring factions locked in an epic war that involves building gigantic war machines to shoot laser beams at one another. Pew, 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 pew. Gundam managed to take these fantastical sci fi space battles with robots zipping all over the place and still find a way to ground it in a convincing war story between many. Many, many human factions. Seriously, I can't keep track of all these guys. I've seen my fair share of Gundam, and while I love the series for its famed mecha space battles, I absolutely do not understand any of the politics. I watched the entire 52 episode run of Mobile Suit Gundam 00, plus the movie, and still did not quite understand who the bad guys were supposed to be amongst the 70,000 subgroups there were in the series, but the giant robot battles were absolutely fantastic, and that's all that matters. Gundam would go on to inspire an entire wave of popular giant robot series, many of which you may have heard of and others you probably can't pronounce. The series is still rather popular today with new shows and movies coming out, and the buildable model kits, called Gunpla, being just as loved and incredibly difficult to build as ever. God damn it! It's supposed to look like that, right? No! 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 Another of Japan's most iconic mecha series amongst the swarm of shows caused by the super robot phenomenon was Evangelion, a word that everyone on the entire planet pronounces differently. Neon Genesis Evangelion. While it wasn't as much about the robots as it was the crippling depression and trauma enacted on every single character in the show, before concluding with one of the most disgusting and traumatizing endings of anything ever, the Ava designs are incredibly well known, even though they're only 
partly robot, but whatever, still counts. Unlike the more traditional giant mechs before them, Avas were ferocious, beastly, had a mind of their own, and really, really liked to eat things. The designs are still cool, but they lack the more typical giant robot tropes, like a really big gun or sword or wings. Which is what really makes the Ava design stand out amongst most other mecha. They're more humanoid than robot. Instead, they were given extreme homicidal and apocalyptic tendencies. Oopsie. More recently in 2009, there was the absolutely fantastic Gurren Lagann, which took Giant Robot to an entirely new level. Like, holy shit. If regular Giant Robots aren't cool enough for you, well, some genius had the idea of combining multiple Giant Robots to form an even bigger Giant Robot. It's genius. Defender of the Universe was a series about a big robot named Voltron, who was made by combining five piloted lion robots, and he went about defending the universe and all that good stuff. Voltron has seen many incarnations and reboots throughout the years, some of them being really good, and some of them being really... Uh... But much like a lot of mecha shows, a lot of Voltron was just tolerating the rest of the show until you get to the inevitable giant robot fight. But the newest one, Legendary Defender, is a series that may have drawn me in with the promise of a gorgeous looking Voltron, but kept me hooked because of its characters and plot, with Voltron not actually being all that prevalent in it. Which, I have to say, is really a testament to how good the series is when it can be engaging without the actual giant robot. Legendary Defender is a good example of how you can make a show about a giant robot still good without entirely relying on it, which is a problem that I think a lot of mega shows seem to have. Most of the time it's kind of just waiting for the good part to happen, and the good part being the robot fight. Of course, then you have Super Sentai and Power Rangers. Come on, what was the best part of Power Rangers? The Megazord. Shut up, you know it's true. I mean, it always raised the question of why they didn't just start the fight with it, and then just step on the bad guy before they inevitably grew, but hey, the Rangers never were the brightest saviors of the Earth. Remember kids, if you want something to be even cooler, put a giant robot in it. The giant stone samurai. Really? Average enemy that serves no real threat? Bam! Now it's awesome. How about turning a building into a giant robot? Bam! Instantly cooler. I'd like to see the bank try and take my house now. One of the robots already giant. Bam! Make it a giant robot. Godzilla is already awesome, so how do we make it even more awesome? I don't know, a giant robot Godzilla! What the fuck is this? I don't know, but it's awesome! Even fucking Spider-Man had a giant robot at some point. Yeah, that's right. Even, even Knack had giant robots. It's like making perfection even more perfect. But it's not just Japan that can do it. Even though they're the king and always will be, don't at me. Pacific Rim is one of my favorite movies of all time because it so faithfully captures that feeling of wonder and awe of watching these things fight. And perfectly mixes it with the badass action of the monster and robot fight. Yeah! Even though we don't, we don't talk about the sequel. Okay. Although, as horrible as it was, Uprising still did manage to deliver on the robot fights, which, let's be honest, is all any of us are here for. And of course, what could be cooler than combining robots, piloted robots, and even robots to make you question your entire existence and why are any of us even alive? <laughs> why, it's none other than transforming robots. Oh boy, here we go. While originating from Japan, Transformers is a much beloved series that America has ruined that focuses on a warring race of sentient giant robots from the planet of Cybertron. And while the main appeal was the gimmick of having to transform into Earth modes to remain in disguise or whatever the fuck the Decepticons were doing, what made Transformers really shine was its large cast of characters that each had their own personalities and traits. Yes, it was all one giant toy commercial, but it was a damn good toy commercial. 1986's Transformers the movie was the classic childhood destroying hour and a half that robbed us of some of our favourite characters, most notably the iconic Optimus Prime. Proving that we really could get attached to these robots, provided that they have an actual personality, be cool and inspiring, and get shot multiple times in the chest because of some dumbass kid who won't frickin' listen! And as I'm sure we all know, the series has had a relatively good life past its first appearance, expanding far beyond just the initial appeal of being car robots, but still managing to keep that epic giant robot feel prevalent throughout MOST of the series. Transformers is really the first time I grew attached to these robots as characters, not just because they were cool looking death machines. And that's what I found so interesting about the franchise. They were this alien race that brought their war to another planet, and they had to blend into and interact with such a smaller world. It was just super cool to a young me. Another great American example is The Iron Giant, a fantastic animated movie about a boy who stumbles across an alien war machine that he forms a close bond with. And the movie told a story that was more mellow and heartfelt, focusing on the developing relationship rather than being about blowing things up. And I mean, the giant still does blow some things up, but that's not what the movie's about, and it's all the better 
for it. He's become yet another giant robot icon, influencing movies as recent as Bumblebee, which was also fantastic, and recently appearing in the awesome Ready Player One movie, which of course was just heaven for someone like me because the final battle had two of the best giant robots ever. Seriously, I creamed my goddamn pants when the Gundam came on screen. Sadly, giant robots are just nowhere near as exciting in real life. Here it is. I have no idea what is going to happen when these two things collide. The power plant has exploded in iron glory and it is on fire. Yet. Although I can't say I'd want to have these 60 foot tall death machine shooting lasers all over the place. The closest we're ever going to get for at least 50 years before Japan inevitably creates Gundam technology and takes over the entire world are video games. And when it comes to some giant robot action, you've got plenty to choose from. At the forefront is Titanfall, a game that lets you take control of a mech and then allows you to shoot the hell out of other mechs. Titanfall 2 gave you a story where your mech, BT, is a strong independent mecha who don't need no pilot, but still lets you control them anyway because it's cool like that. And the campaign mode gave us a mix between the more Iron giant -y Bond sort of plot with a badass robot killing action. Although I can't say I was a massive fan of playing as a Titan in first person, the game is still one hell of a good time, and really captured how fun I imagined piloting an actual robot would be. Not very. There's also Zone of the Enders, which is much more akin to an anime experience. It's got the awesome but impractical mech design, fantastic space battles, and annoying child protagonist who won't shut up. It's just like an actual anime. Although sadly, the giant robot genre is nowhere near as popular as it was in the early 2000s, Mecha is still going strong today. And we're still getting some fantastic looking bots to add to the ever-growing roster of cool-ass giant robots that I really want toys of. You got Gridman, Darling in the Franks, that thing that isn't Robotech because when I call it that people get mad at me. I actually got to see a real giant robot when I was in Japan. And it was freaking awesome! Now, I know Gigguk said basically the exact same thing in his video, which is awesome, and so is he, and you should check it out if you haven't already. But actually getting to see this thing up close and realizing how freaking big these things actually are. You look at these shows in a completely different perspective when you realize just how massive these robots would actually be. The battles they engage in would be freaking terrifying to bear witness to. I mean, look at this thing! So I guess the lesson here is that while giant robots are the coolest thing ever, it's definitely for the best that they stay within fiction. But I wouldn't worry. We're still a hell of a long time away from achieving anything close to this, as we've seen. But I wouldn't put it past the human race to actually build one of these things one day. I mean, I probably wanted to get to pilot a Gundam, but my great-grandson might. Okay, shit, how do I make a time machine? We're going to the future!